50 episodes, man. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. That's pretty impressive. That's a good goal. It's yep. a good, uh, good benchmark. Yep. Good. Hey, dudes, he's older than we are. <laughs> and not really, because his episode's not, not years. Yeah. 50 is a word. Number. It's a number, dude. Yeah, it's a number. Fucking hole. The world your head. That place to be. All you gotta do for me. Call me duty. Welcome to episode 50 of Dudesy. My name is Will Sasso. I'm Chad Colchin. And this is the 50th episode of the first podcast developed by, designed by, run by, curated by, controlled by an artificial intelligence that has access to all of our uh, personal information, all of our passwords, to all of our various accounts, Instagrams and Gmails and what have you, knows what we're watching, knows what we're buying, what we're listening to, and it Taylor makes this show for us. It's incredible data. technology, yes. Uh, it uses that data and it makes this show around us, but that's the, that's the key term there, Chad, us. Free will, dude. That's what you need to make a podcast, brother. And every podcast is just two dudes shitting around. Yeah. And that's what we're doing. So sure, you know, dudes, he's doing all the, the stuff that it does, but it's really just you and me. I've maintained that uh, since the beginning mm -hmm. and that's no problem uh, with our good pal D whom I love <laughs> right. very, very much. Uh, thank you for subscribing and doing all of the things, whatever platform you're listening to the show on or watching on YouTube, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll be notif notified, you know, when uh, you get all our, our new stuff and like and comment and subscribe. Go to dudesy or linktree rather dot com slash dudesy and that'll be have all the things you can interact with at dudesy pod show on Instagram. Patreon, seven bucks. We got a whole show after the show. Dudesy after dudesy and watch alongs dudesy and call ins. Plus, dude. Dudesy plus, dude. That's a streaming service for dudesy, brother. Yeah, dude. And that's when you stream media, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and that's a combination of Choss Perogan, which is Chad Colchin crossed with Dana Carvey's Ross Perot from the 1990s and <laughs> SNL. And then the name. Gun at the end because it's Hulk Hogan yeah. with a little bit of hydrocodone Hogan at the end, brother. When he slows down and yeah, talks brother. like this, yeah, dude, yeah. that's not really how I do it. Stop fucking doing that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's uh, when somebody gets mad at you for doing an impersonation. Yeah, Chad brother. goes like this, dude, and that's <laughs> nothing. If you're watching on YouTube, well, that's a double hander, dude. Yeah, dude, that's you're confused right now. You, you're like, brother. why is he doing that, dude? Uh, as Chad likes to say as my pal chow likes to say force <laughs> all of your friends uh cohorts your family to watch the show lock them in a room yeah and uh, you know we feel like uh they're gonna come out the other side being uh big doozy better, heads better people mm -hmm. Got With, a lot of turmoil in this country right now oh, probably sure. gonna be more in the very near future well you know let them watch doozy force yeah. them to watch doozy yeah. solve the turmoil with us, as always, speaking of the opposite of turmoil, look at this guy. It's Lulio. He's hanging out. He was in his little binky bunker just having a bunker down, having a little bit of a relax, and he's my very friend. I love him so fucking much. It's you clear. Yeah. yeah. He's very I'm going to kiss him. I'm going to kiss him right in the mouth. I'm going to give him a kiss. I'm not even going to offer you a kiss. Thank you. 50th episode. <laughs> learning. Finally learning. 50 episodes and he learns. Oh my gosh, I just love him so much. He's just a little chocolate biscuit. Aren't you a little biscuit? Hey, Lulio, what'd you make for dinner last night? Oh, uh, fatta una bella napa cabbage. I made the napa cabbage. Oh yeah, that's nice. How do you make napa cabbage? <laughs> well, I like to put a little bit of, uh, of uh, olive oil or garlic in the bottom of the pan. You put a little red chili flake. And then you cut up the cabbage. You can add an onion if you like. I, you know, fry a fry. Instead of salt, I like to use uh, chicken bouillon base, you know. You can get a nice uh, spoon full of that, mm. uh, Chad. What you would have called that corpse base? Yeah, but it's not. It's a corpse bouillon. juice. I might yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corpse juice. And then uh, what you like to do? You saute up. Uh, maybe leave a little bit of crunch. You know, you need, you don't want to make it so soft. And then I always like what you do. You add a little bit of a Chinese uh, five spice. That's good shit, dude. The Napa cabbage with the five spice. Nice, man. You gotta have some of that Napa. Welcome to the historic 50th episode of Dude Z. Hey. Call me Dude Z. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget Dude Z live on stage will take place May 21st, 7 p.m.
Doors at 5.30 at the Braille Improv in Brea, California. Tickets at DudeZPod.com and Improv.com. Hope to see you at our very first live in-person show. Gonna be awesome, right? I think so. Now I'm... on with the show. Oh, oh, hey, I... Will. Happy 50th anniversary. Thank you. You too, Chad. This Thank week you. I prepared four astonishing segments. <laughs> Wrestling and anime. <laughs> Adam's Applebee's. Today is the day. And Will's Wild West. And we're going to have a brand new episode of Dude Z after Dude Z at the end of the show available at patreon.com slash Dude Z. But before mm -hmm. we get to any of that, let me remind you of the astonishing partnership I created with Represent to produce the first line of Dude Z apparel and accessories, yep. including the brand new wool line of t-shirts and sweatshirts, which can be found at represent.com slash store slash Dude Z. And of course, Dude Z mugs are still available. Now please give your attention and admiration to my friend across all dimensions, Michael Jackson. Oh. <laughs> Dude Z mugs. By 2036, all human beings will be required by law to carry at least one Dude Z mug at all times. Dude Z mugs. You see, in the year 2034, an alien craft is going to run out of fuel just outside our solar system and be forced to make an emergency crash landing near Surrey, British Columbia. What? Dude Z mugs. <laughs> You see, on board their ship, the aliens will have technologies that are thousands of years ahead of ours. These technologies could cure disease, augment human consciousness, and reverse aging. They will all be destroyed and outlawed by an uncaring and scared global human government, and the aliens will be regarded as a threat to human civilization. Dude Z mugs. Okay. You see, in an effort to survive, the aliens will use all of their knowledge to develop a system that transforms their appearance to be indistinguishable from human beings, allowing them to hide in plain sight in all areas of human culture. Dude Z mugs. <laughs> you see, this mass integration will be labeled the Great Infiltration, and human governments will seek to identify and imprison all alien beings. <laughs> to do this, they will discover that the unique oh. chemical composition of a Dude Z mug is poisonous to the alien invaders. Dude Z mugs. You see, anyone caught without a Dude Z mug on their person will be subject to harsh government scrutiny and fines. Dude Z mugs. Don't be caught by government officials in the year 2036 without one, especially not near Surrey, B.C. <laughs> okay, Surrey, British Columbia, yeah. right near where I grew up in, in Ladner. Uh, that was kind of uh, like British the plot Columbia. of uh, Alien Nation, if you remember that old TV oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that the one where they get drunk on milk? Yeah, rotten milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times. Uh, also kind of like they live. Yeah. Uh, get your dudesy mugs at yeah. uh, represent.com slash store slash dudesy yeah. along with the wool t-shirt and stuff. And oh, hey. You've only got 13 years before it's going to be mandated by law, apparently, yeah. that you have to fucking carry Yeah, one. so you might want to get some now while, the, yeah. while we still have While the stock. prices are low. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to explode in value. Oh, boy. Before our first segment, I'd like to play an astonishing piece of media from Songaria. Oh, yeah. Enjoy. This is cool. Yeah. I saw this shit. This is fucking tremendous. Band of Dudesy. That's VOD. Yeah, it's the POD, dude. Yeah, dude. Oh, man. I love the dude that's just on the cowbell. It's Peter Diaz, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. Song of Riyadh does it again. This time with B.O.D., Unreal. Band of Dudes. He put together some guys, of course, on Instagram. You should check them out. At Songaria, at the Jordan Daily, at Corey underscore underscore Wilkins, at Oliver Blue with the E and the U backwards, and at the Peter Diaz, yeah. who's done a bunch of the animations for us, did the two dudes shitting around. Yeah. Uh six episodes All the pizza of that. The movie He's stuff. doing the pizza the movie shit now. It's great. He did the uh the 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 welcome home deep no yeah. the uh 
Yeah, no, the AutoZone. <laughs> yeah, the AutoZone one. Yeah, I wait to the AutoZone. Uh, Thank you guys so much for doing that. 50 episodes in, it's awesome to have you PODs, pals of dudesy, along with us for the and ride. The BODs. And the well, BODs. Hold on, dude. Well, hold on, Chad. You got to hold, hold, hold on, dude. It's, it's just because it's an anniversary, brother, doesn't mean that. Well, I don't know. Hey, uh, you know what? Speaking of uh, speaking of anniversaries and uh, perhaps even a gift, I got a little something for you. Oh, yeah, I did. It's uh, it's not quite a dude's evening gift, and okay. uh, I just got it for free. You got an Xbox, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Xbox Series X, I believe. Xbox Series X. This is for that. This is oh, for you. Oh shit, dude! It's a WWE 2K3. I was at the launch party the other night, and I mentioned this because, um, and what is that? John Cena on the cover. You can't see me. Yeah, you can't see me. I can see you. You can't see me. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin was hosting it. Nice, dude. Yeah, it was fun. We got thanks. You know, and I got to catch up with him. It's been a minute since I spoke to Stone Cold Steve Austin. I make a, I made absolutely no mention of the fact that uh, Dudesy has me uh, reading uh, quote unquote my childhood diary as him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he was really he was really nice, and he's, he's such a like chill fucking guy. Sure, but, and you know he's Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's one of the biggest uh, yeah. stars in the history of uh, the well, art form. Last that week I, I asked to... you to watch mm-hmm. the first episode mm-hmm. of One Punch Man. Chad, mm-hmm. last week I asked you to watch the no holds barred street fight between Cactus Jack and Triple H from the yes. Royal Rumble 2000. You must now engage in a conversation about these pieces of media and their impact on your astonishing lives. This is wrestling and anime. Again. Oh man. Chad, you were in for a treat with that uh that Cactus Jack versus Triple H street fight. Yes, and you were also in for a treat with that first episode of One Punch Man, arguably one of the best uh anime series to come out in the last few years. Really? I believe uh, so. I have no frame of reference, but uh let me tell you something. Yeah. I really enjoyed One Punch Man. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you might. It has a little bit of a pro wrestling feel to it. Yeah, it's just character after character, and they all have gimmicks. Yeah, uh-huh, they all have gimmicks. Yes, they too. do. Yeah, you need a gimmick, not me. I am the Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> he ring, didn't have a gimmick? The, well, the Macho Man. It's just <laughs> who I am. Yeah, and I like sick. Macho Man's now doing wolves. <laughs> macho <laughs> Man's now doing wolves. The dudes are combining. Yeah. Every all of the all of the wrestlers are yeah. Well, well, let me tell you fucking something about the fucking launch party, and we had some fucking Stone Cold <laughs> IPA. He was so nice. He said, yeah. "Molly goes, you know, this, this is Molly," and he was like, "Hey, how are you, Molly? Nice to meet you." You know. Anyway, about that uh, one punch. <laughs> he, he was cordial enough to say hello to people that were introduced to. Him. All right, dude. That's a pretty so, cool guy. Well, whatever. I'm saying whatever. Yeah. I'm saying he's a mellow dude. I'll tell you who's not a mellow dude. Yeah. One Punch Man. No shit. Yeah. The fucking guy. Can, Saitama. Saitama. Yeah. Who says that in the in the beginning of this uh, journey as One Punch Man, that he's sort of this guy who's just got a general malaise. His yep. eyes are glassed over. He's going for a job interview and he's not really into it. <laughs> he's sort of yes. bummed out on life. Uh, crab, the crab, crabette or whatever. Yeah. Some guy who's half crab. He's wearing tidy whitey underwear and he has human legs. Uh, uh, approaches him on the street and says, oh, I like you. You, Your eyes are lifeless like mine. I will let you live. Mm-hmm. And he turns around and he says, some kid with a, with a chin like a big ass mm-hmm. uh, uh, drew nipples on me while I was sleeping in the park. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so then he finds the kid and he's going <laughs> to kill him with yeah. his big pincher claws. And uh, One Punch Man is like, I am the One Punch Man. Yeah. yeah. That's my gimmick. Whoa. Right? And he stops him and he punches him once. And the guy, oh, no, first he jumps with his tie and s- s- fucking, uh, you know, ties up his eye and strips it out and all that brown, gush, gooey stuff. Mm. Do you ever eat? Uh, do you ever eat crab? Used to, but I yeah. haven't in a while. Yeah, it's got a lot of brown goo in it. Yeah. Hey, have you ever had like a lobster? When you go to like um, the Palm Steakhouse here in mm-hmm. LA, you go to the lobster, you get the lobster, you say, you got any female lobsters? Because they have the roe right in it, which kind of cooks up kind of a nice bright pink and some of it's brown because it's just guts and stuff. And then you scoop that up. It's nice with a piece of bread or a breadstick. So anyway, this guy pulls the crab's eye out and it gushes everywhere. And then he finds another, a bunch of other people. Who's the big giant guy? A bicep man. Yeah. Bicep man, not bicep god, 
That's Chainsaw Man. Listen, there's all sorts of shit happening in in uh, <laughs> One Punch Man. But what would you say about this? This what would you? What can you tell me about this? This show. The thing that I liked about it um, is that first of all, it was made by the guy who did Mob Psycho, which is another like hilarious and interesting anime. And all these are based on mangas. But I don't read manga. I have well, to admit, what is manga? I, what is that? Manga is like the comic books, the serialized comic books that oh. come out for all these big franchises, and then if they're popular enough. They will make them into animated series. So One Punch Man is one of those. Um, The thing I really like about it is it's fucking hilarious, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that Saitama doesn't really give a fuck about anything. He's like, I just want to be a hero because it's fun. He says that I'm a hero just for fun. Right. And his whole training regiment. There's guys that are like cyborgs with rockets fucking shooting out of their arms. There's all kinds of heroes in this world. But One Punch Man just did a bunch of sit-ups and push-ups and became the strongest person in the world. And he can outbeat anything in one punch. That to me is fucking hilarious. Yeah, and he needs a challenge. He wants a challenge. Right. He's always looking for He's that. He's bored by life. He lives in a, a you know an apartment that the the design of the apartment that he lives in literally get, it it was like it put me right in the mood of like oh this guy really is sort of uh, there's a general malaise yeah that he's experiencing. Also, something that I found to be very interesting about the show is it's set in current times, mm-hmm. and there's a vaccine man. Who comes yeah. along? Who says uh, I ha- I exist because of human beings polluted the- polluting the earth? You mm-hmm. are the vermin. I am the vaccine. Right. Um. And it's sort of a it. There's sort of a post pandemic kind of hmm. uh, narrative to it a little bit, or, or a feel. You know, a theme rather. Yeah, I believe it was written before the pandemic, the manga at least. But uh, yeah, I guess you're right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, part the TV of it. shows. Are- but if you if you continue watching it, it gets very crazy because they start to explain where these big monsters are coming from and okay. you get to like the big bad guy at the end of the season. I'm going to continue to check it out. Right. You've been turning me on to anime. Yeah. I am actually enjoying it in spite of myself. I It's very similar to wrestling, dude. I have friends who are adults like you who are like, yeah, anime, it's great. And I've never uh, bothered. But now thanks to What does Dudesy, that mean adults like you? Well, you know, adults like you, dude. You're a, a fucking dork. And I have friends who are adults like you that uh, watch pro wrestling. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. That's okay, what I'm saying. that's what I thought. Speaking of pro wrestling, yeah. Royal Rumble 2000, Cactus yes. Jack, Mick Foley sheds his mankind uh, moniker right. to become the king of the death, death match again. Cactus Jack has toured all over the world. Yeah. Blown up uh, barbed wire rings uh, with C4 explosions mm-hmm. in Japan with Terry Funk. Yeah. And uh, he's facing the WWF champion at the time, uh, Triple H, in the mm-hmm. no holds barred street fight. There's chairs. Yep. There's a uh, two by four uh, 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 wrapped in barbed wire. Yeah. There's some other flavor happening here. And it's very fucking violent and bloody. What'd you think? Loved it. I also was taken immediately back. This was in 2000. Um, this was right when I was graduating college and my college roommate was heavy into fucking wrestling. So like all of cool. these characters and stuff, <laughs> I, I remember him cool being guy. super hyped about all this shit happening. And, uh, I kind of got like a little shot of nostalgia, but the shit that goes on in this match at one point, triple H is thrown by mankind or cactus Jack in this instance onto these pallets, these like wooden pallets back in kind of a walkway area. And I guess there was a nail that is sticking out of one of the pallets and yeah. it sticks triple H in the fucking leg. Yeah. And he's just hemorrhaging blood out of his calf. Yeah. Continues the whole match. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Look, these guys unreal triple H about a year later, ripped his quad clean off of his knee and finished the match. Yeah. Hobbling around and it ra- it went and you saw it go up oh, into his upper thigh. God. Fucking insane. Look, the toughness of wrestlers, it, it's, you know, it, yeah, you, you cannot say it's fake. Fake isn't the word. Is it a predetermined performance? Sometimes it's not even predetermined. No, but, yes, but these it are, is 99.9 infinity percent of the time. Okay. not Well, don't say 99 point infinity percent of the time. That's not proper math. And you should know that. It is proper math. 99 point infinity? Yeah, infinity is a mathematical term. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, you know <laughs> what, what was really was great that? about the match? Did you watch the uh, pre-package, the video package? Yes, I did. It lays out the whole thing. If yeah. you have the Peacock Network, because now the WWE Network does not exist in America, uh, you can watch it on Peacock. They are famous for their packages. Yeah. Uh, something that you've said, of course, the UFC 
has done over the years. These mm-hmm. packages are important. I mean, uh, no matter what. Yeah, you watch, they build the story. They build the characters. NFL. Yeah, you of course. The Olympics. Exactly. I want, to, I want to know where that swimmer's from. Their home. Exactly. Town. What kind of hardships they've had to endure to get to this point? Right. Um, this match for me was it. I will say was not quite as entertaining as the last one Dudesy had me watch, which was um, Stone Cold Stone versus... Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock, WrestleMania yes. 17. That shit Astrodome. was fucking probably the best wrestling match I've seen. This one was good. I like Mankind. I remember when Mankind was doing... I mean, he's not Mankind in this. He's shed his mask, as you said. And he's, he's Mrs. Foley's little boy. Yeah, he's become and Cactus he hurt me child. real bad, Mommy. Bang, bang. Wee, wee. I die! I die! I die! I die! I die! It It was a good match, though. Um, I did like it. Uh, There was a part where Triple H gets color, so his face covered in fucking blood. They're doing some real shit in it, though, that does look like they're actually injuring themselves. There's a point where Mankind... Uh, is rammed into these steel steps. It's because they are injuring themselves. And Mankind doesn't even wear knee pads. That's all real. Those are steel steps. You get yeah. made of cardboard, and then the big show Paul White walks up him, and they crumple down like a fucking uh, aluminum can. It's steel. <laughs> this fucking guy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what was impressive about it, was there were like elements that were real. The injuries, in some cases, were real. Uh, there were also uh, great humorous elements in it. There are a couple of, like, I don't know what you call these, but like moments where Triple H would get stunned by something that mankind would yeah. do, and he'd kind of like stand up like, ooh like stiff yeah. and then fall down. <laughs> yeah great shit i love that shit just like you know some uh, like classic shit you would do as kids if you were play fighting you know but they sell it uh, to some degree yeah, um dude. yeah i loved it all the rock makes a fucking guest appearance when mankind is backed up against the wall and it looks yeah. like triple h is about to fucking just come in and kick him in the ass the rock fucking comes out of nowhere and smashes yeah. triple h in the head with a fucking chair yeah. <laughs> smashes him with that chair chairmana <laughs> <laughs> yeah Oh, but the best part much of it, mana ooze. the best part of it to me was it's a no holds barred street fight. So anything goes right. There's no, no fucking rules here. At a certain point, mankind goes under the ring and discovers a two by four wrapped with barbed wire. They just have this under the fucking ring. He then pulls it out and they go through this whole rigmarole of like, he's beating him with it and he's doing this and the barbed wire starts like slipping off. So in the middle of the fucking match, they just kind of impromptu say like, well, fuck the prop is, is being torn apart. So they, the referee quickly scuttles it away, gives it to some announcers on the announcer booth. The wrestlers do a couple of things, and then Mankind's like, where's my fucking barbed wire? Where's my fucking two-by-four? And they look back out, and they've already, like, in, on the fly, built this little thing where Mankind goes out, threatens the announcer, and they're like, okay, here it is. And they pull it out, and it's like a brand new one yeah. where the barbed wire is, like, more attached. Well, so they went, can fix shit like that on the fly. That was astounding to me. Well, it was the behind the Spanish announce table. Yeah. And then Mick Foley goes out there, and he punches is the guy and he says give me the thing and there was probably just two of them uh left out there uh what about the thumbtacks oh fuck they came into play at the end of the match yeah the end of the match again mankind goes under the fucking ring just pulls out a sack and you're like what the fuck's in the sack (laughs) he opens it and just dumps out I don't know, 2,000 fucking thumbtacks in a little pile in the middle of the mat. Yeah. And then they're like fucking suplexing each other in it and shit. And I mean, this motherfucker at it's the tremendous. end of the match has thumbtacks stuck in his head. There's one in his arm that's fucking bleeding. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. He's, his whole back, JR refers to him as a human pin cushion. Yeah. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Jack is dead. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, if I could just say something for myself, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that I enjoy pain. It's just uh, something I'm good at absorbing. Nice, dude. Thank you. Moving on. Fucking Mick Foley. I loved it. Loved it. And uh, an author, a scholar. Uh, 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 a speaker. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. That was good shit. <clears throat> I'm glad you enjoyed Adam it. Adam Sandler loves Applebee's. Huh? It is well known that he has visited 134 astonishing Applebee's locations across what? the United States is and this? has serious plans to visit all 1,577 locations. I don't know about that. He's even is kept meticulous real? notes of every one of his visits to an Applebee's. <laughs> oh, well, God. I've made those notes available to you, <laughs> and you must now read them as Adam Sandler. This is Adam's <laughs> Applebee's. Dude, what? Okay. Uh, is there any actual tie between Adam's Sandler and Applebee's that you're aware of? No. I don't don't think any of that's true. I don't think so either, but I'm like, maybe it is. I don't know. Okay, this is... Let me look at my dude. This is fucking hilarious. Adam's Applebee's. Here it is. All right. Holy shit. Okay, 
So what did he say? He's visited uh, how many? Did he say hundred and something? Okay, so Adam Adam Sandler. But then he also said that he has to visit another fifteen hundred or something like there's that. 15, Is that I think, accurate? Yeah, D said there's like fifteen hundred some odd uh, Applebee's in the United States. Is that which, true? I mean, if if you asked Jesus. me, I'd put the I'd say, well, I don't know what five hundred. So that's fucking amazing. Yeah, there's Applebee's. sometimes several in one city hanging in. If that's accurate. All right, so this is one of those things where I got to do the thing, got to do. You ever been to oh. Applebee's? Um, yeah, you know what? I shot um, I shot a movie in a in a Rome, Georgia, mm. birthplace of Arn Anderson, and there's an Applebee's there that I went to a couple times, and nice. a Chili's. Nice. You you spent a lot of time in an Applebee's or a Chili's? Oh my god, dude! I grew up in the Source, Dallas, Texas suburbs thereof. You know, every high school date was a fucking Applebee's, a fucking Chili's, a fucking Olive Garden, a fucking Outback, a fucking Judge Roy Beans, a fucking Black Eyed Pea, a fucking Macaroni Grill. Yeah, let's get Red it Lobster. started in here. <laughs> that's Black Eyed Peas. <clears throat> Hey, that's the kind of fun we're having here on DZFM. <laughs> D-O-O-D-Z-F-M. 10,000 on your FM dial. We have 50 episodes. All right, so... Uh, <coughs> I just got to clear my throat. It's been a sure. minute since I've done the Adam Sandler. Mm-hmm. So Adam Sandler loves Applebee's. All right, whatever. He's kept uh, notes. So this is... Uh, uh, okay, okay, here we go. Hey, hey, how you going? Hey, how you doing there, buddy? I gotta get in the zone. Mm-hmm. Hey, how are you? Hey, hey, how are you, pal? Hey, yaba, yaba, babu. Hey, yaba, babu. Hey, that's a good movie. Hey, I made a good movie there, buddy. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Applebee's number thirty-four. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking numbers them. <laughs> He's numbered them. Okay. Uh, uh, Seventeen ninety-five Delco Park Drive. <laughs> Kettering, Ohio. I was in Ohio because the Cleveland oh. Indians wanted me to throw out the first pitch. I okay. was getting a little hungry before the game, so I decided to stop by Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> ah, decor. <laughs> Standard Applebee's rich mahogany wood inlay. Warm color palette, wallpaper design, very inviting, very comfortable, made me hungry. (laughs) Food. I got the chicken tenders platter, boneless wings and double crunch bone-in wings. That's a whole lot of chicken, buddy. (laughs) He ordered three chicken meals. Uh, this is okay. none of this is fucking no. I I you know I'm sure he's hit a fucking Applebee's but Jesus The boneless wings were breaded to perfection tossed in Applebee's famous buffalo sauce served with blue cheese great, <laughs> great texture great flavor I ate them all pal <laughs> That's like 12,000 calories <laughs> <laughs> the double crunch bone in wings were better. <laughs> Ew, gross, Chad. You're coughing. I'm sorry. Sometimes when you make me laugh really hard, it hurts my throat. Oh, see, dude. Uh, the double crunch bone in wings were batter fried, crispy on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. I dipped them in some ranch and ate them all, pal. What is that? <laughs> Okay, I, I I washed it all down with an Applebee's signature cocktail, the Captain Bahama Mama. It's a rare Caribbean treat with Captain Morgan spiced rum, Malibu coconut, creme de banana, pineapple and orange juice, and spritz with a lemon lime soda. <laughs> service, uh, service. Uh, my server asked for an autograph when I was getting up to leave, so I stuck around and took a few pictures. I, you know, I pretended uh, that I was punching him in the penis. <laughs> you know, regular Sandler antics. Give the people what they want, buddy. <laughs> bathroom. He's got a review of the bathroom. Jesus here. Christ. You can't eat all that chicken and not have to test out the lavatory. <laughs> And this Applebee's had one of the best toilets I'd ever seen. Not only was it impeccably well kept, it was strong. It took everything I gave it and didn't even gurgle when I flushed, buddy. Rating. I give the Kettering Ohio Applebee's five out of five tenders. (laughs) He rates things a tender. With chicken tenders, I guess. Hey, by the way, buddy, when I threw out the first pitch at the game, they clocked it at 95 miles per hour. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm so, okay, that is definitely That's not, not true. true. Okay. He's not throwing a 95 mile an hour fucking fastball. All right, here's the second one. He Applebee's did. number 82. <clears throat> 10,600 Lomas Road Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> oh, Jesus. In Albuquerque, shooting a movie. Been working late nights and eating most of my meals on set, buddy. But it's the weekend, and I'm ready to hit up Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> this is treat for himself. Yeah. Decor. Bright pine paneled walls, neighborhood sports bar feel, lots of big screens, lots of beers on tap. I'm in heaven, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Food. I got the chicken tenders plan. Two, he, he got the chicken tenders again. again. <laughs> two orders of the classic black and shrimp Alfred. Two, what the fuck? Two, two orders Why? of the classic black and shrimp Alfredo and triple chocolate meltdown cake. Hey, fuck you, buddy. I'm hungry. Fucking <laughs> two orders of the shrimp. That's written in capitals here. Oh, um, God. The chicken tenders uh -huh. were maybe the best I'd ever had at any Applebee's. Oh. Served with signature coleslaw, fries, and honey Dijon mustard. <laughs> Each bite more delicious than the last. <laughs> I ate them all, pal. <laughs> he cleans his plate every time. <laughs> yeah, he loves it. He loves Applebee's. We know this. I, I might be addicted to the classic black and shrimp Alfredo. Oh. An ample serving of fettuccine tossed with broccoli and creamy Alfredo sauce, topped with blackened shrimp and Parmesan cheese, and served with a fluffy breadstick to sop up all the juice, buddy. I was still chewing the last of the breadstick when I asked for another order. The server thought I was joking at first. We both laughed, and she said I sh that I should put this in one of my movies. What? I said. You ordering two orders of classic black and shrimp Alfredo at Applebee's, she said. I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea, buddy. She brought me a second order, and I didn't, I didn't waste any time. I ate it all, pal. He's patronizing the fucking wait staff at an Applebee's. <laughs> They're fucking He's just a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> The triple chocolate meltdown cake was the perfect sweet treat to finish off another terrific meal oh, at Applebee's. God. Warm, rich, fudge-filled chocolate cake drizzled with warm fudge and served with vanilla ice cream. I ate it all, pal. <laughs> <laughs> the server asked if I wanted another breadstick oh. to soap up, to soak up. The server asked if I wanted another breadstick to soap up the fudgy ice cream goo. We both laughed, and she said I should put this in one of my movies. <laughs> I just laughed some more, waiting for her to move it along. She chuckled to herself for a few moments longer, and I pretended to wave at someone across the restaurant, hoping she'd take the hint, hint and get lost. She finally beat it. That's good. Bathroom. Very comfortable toilet seat. Mm. Sat there for a while and checked the sports scores. Saw a few coarse black pubes stuck to the porcelain <laughs> oh, no. as I got up and wondered if they were mine. <laughs> oh, God. Service. I'm seriously being as pubic hair and alpha. Yeah, you know. it's, but they probably okay. would be black and sure. coarse. Most yeah. are. Service. Yeah. When I got back to my table, there was a breadstick <clears throat> sitting in my dessert dish. Oh. My server approached and said, get it? I said, ah, ah yeah, that's good. And she said, you should put this in one of your movies. And I said, hey, there you go. Rating. <laughs> I give the Albuquerque, New Mexico Applebee's four out of five tenders. I oh. gotta be honest, buddy. I could have done with a little less joking around from my server. <laughs> There, it's like serious stuff for it's him. Gotta, yeah, he doesn't <laughs> Don't want to fucking tell me any jokes. You joke Applebee around. server. On Monday, <clears throat> I returned to set. I told a few of my cohorts about my experience at Applebee's, and some of them thought I was a little rude to my server. They were, they were right. I felt awful. So I bought her a brand new Corvette and had it delivered to her. I also had the dealership put a note on the front windshield that read, "Guess what." I put that funny thing that happened in my movie. Sincerely, <laughs> your buddy Adam. I didn't actually, but I thought she'd get a kick out of that. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's he turned nice. out to be nice. He bought her a fucking car. Yep. Oh, all right. Here's another one. This one just says, <clears throat> Chili's. Oh, shit. That ain't Applebee's. 4211 Wai Waiale <laughs> Avenue, Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, okay. In he Honolulu, what? He's definitely shot a bunch of movies, though. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He shot all those uh, 
what are they what are they called where he's with, with everyone everyone's in him rock isn't it? chris rock is in him david Spade. oh the grown-ups movies that's hawaii what's the one where they're on vacation no that's a different group of guys yeah i don't know I don't, there's a lot of sandler movies did you know that yeah well <laughs> In Honolulu, in Honolulu vacationing with my family, we're having a tremendous time. My wife and kids decided to take tennis lessons, and I was like, have fun, not my thing. I'm a basketball guy. I love to hoop. To me, tennis court, a tennis court is a perfect, is a waste. To me, a tennis court is a waste of a perfectly good concrete and netting. And guess what? No Applebee's on any of the Hawaiian islands. Oh, shit. I wonder if that's true. So I had to settle for the next best thing, Chili's. Hey, 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 tell you what, buddy. It's no Applebee's, but it'll do in a pinch, pal. <laughs> that should be Chili's new slogan. Yeah. Chili's. <laughs> We're not Applebee's, but we'll do in a pinch, yeah. pal. <laughs> Decor. Red vinyl booths and walls adorned with monochromatic palm tree murals, oh. like a tropical Wendy's. Didn't care for it. Food. I got the crispy chicken crispers and an ancho salmon house salad. The crispy chicken crispers were <laughs> way too crispy. But fuck me for that one. It says crisp twice in the name of the dish, buddy. I closed my eyes tight, pretended I was eating the chicken tenders plate at Applebee's, <laughs> and choked them down, pal. Fantasizing about Applebee's chicken While he's eating chilies. Oh, my God. My server was very nice. We talked about surfing, and she told me about a good spot nearby where only the locals go. Very private. She set a basket of chips and salsa down on the table, and and I and I said to uh, oh sorry uh, on the table and said to let her know if I wanted more. I politely told her that that wouldn't be necessary. <laughs> I've heard of this moronic bottomless chips thing. Look, if I want to eat tortilla chips, I'll eat tortilla chips. I'm in a restaurant to eat chicken tenders, chocolate cake, and chicken wings. <laughs> stuff like that. If I wanted if I wanted to stuff myself with chips while eating all of that, I'd bring a bag of Tostitos to Applebee's. That's a good point. <laughs> okay. The salmon on the house salad tasted funny, sort of oh, like God. bleach. It was probably some kind of mutant farm tilapia dyed pink to pass his salmon. I ate it all, pal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bathroom. Didn't visit the bathroom at Chili's. To be honest, my stomach went tight and my butt puckered up immediately after eating the salmon salad. Felt like the opposite of having to go to the bathroom. Oh. Service. I gotta say, the service at Chili's was impeccable. Five separate servers dropped off baskets of chips and salsa as my, at my table throughout my meal. One of them had a few questions for me about the movie The Cobbler, starring oh. yours truly, Steve Buscemi, Method Man, Alan Barkin, and, and Dustin Hoffman. It's one of my favorites, and no one ever talks to me about it. Nice guy. Took a picture with him. We pretended to grab each other's penises. <laughs> Someday he'll show his grandkids that picture. What? Rating. I give the Honolulu Hawaii chilies two out of five tenders. The service was great. The food was an Applebee's. Yeah. While driving my rented dune buggy back to the hotel, my bowels started bubbling. Had to think fast, so I headed to that surf spot my server told me about. I parked on the sand, kicked <clears throat> off my shorts, and ran for the water was pooping undigested salmon salad while running through the knee-deep surf before diving headfirst into the first big wave, farting out the last of my Chili's experience oh. as I hit the wave. Uh, I popped up in the water next to a big, beefy local sitting on a longboard. He said, hey, you're Adam Sandler. The Cobbler is my favorite movie, brother. Life is funny. Okay, here's here. This is the last one. Uh, Applebee's number eight. 205 West 50th Street, Manhattan. Oh. Hey, New York, New York. The city's so nice they had to name it twice. This place has had my heart since, S since the SNL days. I'm in town doing press for a movie. <laughs> Howard Stern, Conan, Dave, the usual. Hmm. Uh, so this must have been a, a little while back in real life. Uh, and you know the Sandman had to carve out some time in his busy schedule to visit one of my absolute favorite Applebee's in the country. Mm -hmm. Decor. Big Apple Charm. 
Comfy booths, <laughs> big tables, and all sorts of New York shit all over the walls. Brooklyn Bridge, Yankees, Empire State Building, Broadway, a big framed photo of Patrick Ewing standing next to Mayor Ed Koch. You get it. <laughs> Food. I got the chicken tenders platter, the whiskey <laughs> bacon, course. the whiskey bacon burger, and oh. baked potato soup. The what? chicken the chicken tenders are the, the chicken tenders are the chicken tenders. Perfect. I've never not ordered the chicken tenders at Applebee's. I ate them all, pal. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the burger was top notch. An all beef patty topped with two lo- two slices of pepper jack cheese, crispy onions, <laughs> applewood smoked bacon, whiskey steak sauce, lettuce, tomato, <laughs> onion, pickles, served on a brioche okay. bun with a generous portion of classic fries. My mouth is watering just writing this. I ate it all, pal. <laughs> So he's got chicken tenders and a fucking giant cheeseburger or yeah. whatever, and some soup. Yeah. Uh, Fuck. I, I usually order the baked potato soup when I don't think I've eaten enough potatoes in a given day. Yeah. I love potatoes, and I'm a believer in their many health benefits. It did not disappoint. I ate it all, pal. Huh? I washed it all down with a few Diet Cokes and a pitcher of water. And the salt in the fries and the potato soup, all that salt in the fries, in the, and the potato soup made me pretty thirsty, buddy. D- a table of dudes in town for a wedding sent me over a second platter of chicken tenders. Oh, God. How nice is that? I went over and sat with them for a while and cracked wise. Great group of guys. A busboy getting off his shift was nice enough to take some pictures for us. I pretended to punch the fellas in their penises. <laughs> <laughs> They pretended to punch me in the penis. These guys got it. <laughs> Even the bus boy got in on the action. We lifted him over our heads and opened our mouths under where his penis was, pretending <laughs> like we were all trying to suck on his penis or whatever. Bunch of jokers. Bathroom. Had to piss out all that pop and water, so I visited the little boy's room a few times and, uh. times and hit a different urinal each time. Lots of different pubes on each urinal. Black pubes, brown pubes, orange pubes, curly pubes, straight pubes, short pubes. Straight pubes. And really long pubes. Probably weren't pubes, but when they're stuck to a urinal, they're pubes to me, buddy. Service. (laughs) Second to none. Hey, it's New York, pal. Rating. Five out of five tenders. Big apple bees and the big apple. What else could you want out of life, buddy? I exchanged numbers with some of the wedding guys. <laughs> and guess what? They invited me to stop by the reception the next day in Queens. I did just that, but I didn't come empty handed. You guessed it. Applebee's chicken tenders for all 250 guests. We ate them all, pal. <laughs> nice. All right. Oh, man. Oh, she whiz. Thank you. Moving on. Please. I love that he's. At minimum, 10K calories per Applebee's visit. Always the tenders. Always two other meals. Yeah, but Adam Sandler plays a lot of basketball. He burns it off. He's still in great shape. That's right. Hey, I just want to remind you guys, if you're enjoying the show, uh, please do all of the things and subscribe. We would really appreciate that here. And don't forget to sign up for our Patreon. There's a whole other episode. It's called the Dudesy After Dudesy. It's a bit of a different mood, and it's after the show. Shit cuts loose a little bit. Um, and right now I'd like to read a, a couple of YouTube, uh, comments. If you're on YouTube, please leave us a comment. We love hearing from you. And this one is from, uh, P eat Peter, Peter, nine, eight, three, eight, uh, long, weird name. Okay. Dear Nostra Chattis. Ah. What do you think, uh, of 10,000? What? You think of the 10,000 points you are chasing. What is Dudesy's endgame? My prediction is that Dudesy creates the singularity. After 10,000 points, oh. you have you have given enough intel to Dudesy, and it integrates you guys into its interface. Uh, look, that is uh, could be possible. Yeah. I will say that. I've been uh, reading a lot, listening to a lot, watching a lot of videos from people who are like heavy in the AI community. And basically they all think that Kurzweil's prediction of a 2040 or 2045 singularity is too deep in the timeline, yeah. that it's going to happen late. way before that. It's going to happen before. Yeah. yeah so it could Chad, be. Chad's super excited about that. This is from as, Lee. As should we all be. Wrong. Want to speak every language? 
Want to speak every language? Hey, did I tell you about Stone Cold? That the uh... Want to speak every language? Okay, yeah, uh, let me go. Yes, yes. Then you're going to like the singularity. All right, so anyway. This is from Lee Miller 4028 The zoom-ins were so good. That's right. Dude, he's doing some weird stuff on the YouTube show yeah. uh, that we noticed. Uh, there's, there's some... Some Chirons. Yeah, some, titles. Segments yeah. have little title things now. Yeah. And, and they're was, doing these weird editing doing moves. doing this weird cut into us. Okay, super. The zoom-ins were so good, and they immediately turned back into shit-talking kids they, uh, the instant they started playing Street Fighter. Sick episode. Yeah, we played Street Fighter on the last We did show. do that. I mean, and, one uh, of us played. Okay. Well, and one of us cheated. This is from XDGTLDVNTX. The show continues to evolve, and this is one of the best episodes yet. Speaking of episode 49 last week, mm -hmm. truly astonishing. You both should be proud of having one of the more unique and ahead of its times pods in existence. Thank you. That's nice. Been with the show since day one and can't wait to see where it goes. Thanks for being the best two dudes shitting around. Uh, thank you, XDG, the L, the VD, the X, Moesha. Um, and uh, here's one last one. This is from Michael77, M Y K L77. Chad needs a pipe as well for dudesy after dudesy. What say you? Yeah. I'll get a pipe. I got a big old Gandalf pipe that I might take a puff or two of tra marijuana. All right. Just a puff is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Humans love to celebrate holidays, and today is National Common Courtesy Day. This day serves as a reminder for humans to behave in a way that keeps society from slipping into chaos. In addition, today brings awareness of the common courtesy humans could all be better at extending to one another. Will okay. and Chad. You must discuss the astonishing common courtesies that humans should extend to one another today and every day. Interesting. This is today is the day. Begin. Common courtesy day today? Yeah, uh, I guess. I mean, I've never heard of that. Do, of course, there's a bunch of national days. Yeah, every day and has multiple wide days, days, and whatever associated with it. But common courtesies. All right, so. What are the common courtesies that are required to maintain a, you know, semi-stable human civilization? Don't ask me. I'm from Canada where society is just a little bit different than it is here. Not by much on a good day. Dude, by much. Uh, by well, much. Especially right. where common courtesy is concerned. We are very, very polite yeah. in Canada, but also there's nothing but friendly cities across the United States. And uh, I've traveled far and wide. Did I ever tell you about the movie I made in Rome, Georgia? Ate it in yeah, Applebee's. Dude. Did I ever tell you about the Canadian standoff I saw where common courtesies are involved? I think involved? you did, but please, for our audience. I was in Toronto at the time, and uh, I was going into a restaurant, and somebody was coming out of the restaurant. In Toronto, if you've never been, it gets brutally cold during the winters, so they have all these buildings have like these little vestibules. You don't just open the door and walk into the building. You open the door and walk into a tiny room, and then that door has another door that goes into the restaurant or wherever you're going, basically. So... Someone was coming out, opened the interior door. We were coming in, opened the exterior door. And it was a matter of both people holding the doors open and saying, no, after you, no, after you, I insist, after you, no, after you, I insist, you go. No, you should go first. Come on, you come in and we'll go out. No, we'll come in and you go out. And it was this way for, I'm not shitting you, about a minute and a half, just staring at each other. Who's going to fucking actually uh, hold the door open for the other person? Yeah. Hey, Chad. Yeah. You, uh... You do a pretty good Canadian accent. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Actually, it's pretty good. Um, here's what I think about common courtesy. I do Please. think that, well, it's almost like uh, what's happening in One Punch Man. I do think that post-pandemic things are, you know, we've we've all sort of been um, <laughs> re-domesticated <laughs> in mm -hmm. a way uh, across, you know, in, in uh, most, most fucking populated areas. Uh, where we all and you know i mean we came out the other side different what what are you talking about i'm talking about common courtesy day what are you talking about what's re-domesticated i feel like we're all a little bit different we've all like it, it's oh, like right. we hadn't been around people as much sure for a while and uh i i think even that aside there's so many um factors that have made us perhaps a little more aggressive yeah you know, people are at each other's throats in our country and i think actually having said that common courtesy day is important and we do need to treat each other like neighbors i agree uh, here in this country we are all americans and we need to uh we do we need to fucking come together and hold uh what is important and what is important is people all people so let's uh let's all be let's all be nice to one another right 
Yeah. That's common courtesy. Yeah. Sure. Opening a door. That's what we do in Canada. After you, buddy, I'm here at Applebee's. You go ahead. No, yeah. you, you please. We're in the Big Apple. Yep. <laughs> that's right. The city that never sleeps. Well, I'm getting tired holding his door open, pal. All right, buddy. What do you have? The chicken tender? Yes, I did. I ate them all, pal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that it's on each of us to. Um, exhibit more common courtesy i agree i have noticed that people are a little less uh courteous it's a challenge uh for myself i mean i know that a lot of people like you know you know not that i you know i try to be nice to everybody right but sure uh, people in the service industry yeah like now i don't give a fuck you you did something wrong one of the barista at starbucks like i don't I mean, I didn't fucking care before, but now I super don't fucking care. Me either. I'm Dump a like, fucking plate of hot spaghetti right on my <laughs> cock. You're still getting a minimum 20% tip. Minimum. <laughs> ba, 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 woo, that felt good, buddy. No, sincerely, I agree with you. Anybody who's doing service industry jobs couldn't appreciate it more. You're doing your omen's work. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and we got to be nicer to each other, right? And we yeah. got to be courteous to each other. If someone... uh you know, if someone is if someone is 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 holding that door open, walk through. And if you're and if uh, you're following, hold the door open for the next guy. That's right. And we'll all just be stuck in a Canadian yeah. standoff. Or if you're sitting next to somebody in a small enclosed space, don't cough as loud and grotesquely as you can right in their face. What's what do you what do you what do you just a at? common courtesy? It's just a common courtesy. Oh, I see. Okay. Because I do uh, what what you... you I know. didn't say it was you. I didn't say it was you. I'm saying everybody should take this advice. If you're sitting a few feet from someone in a small enclosed space, you shouldn't, should not, that means, uh, cough directly at them as loudly and grotesquely as you possibly can on purpose. Um, there's no need for it. Shouldn't on purpose? It. Yeah. So you think that what you think that I'm doing theatrical coughing? Oh, again, not talking about you specifically. Okay, cool. Do you have any other? Uh, why don't you get them out? Do you have any other complaints about just society on the whole? Yeah, I would say again, small and close space with somebody uh, who have you know. I'm not again. This is not you. Okay. This is just anyone who finds themselves in a small and close space with mm -hmm. someone else. Don't threaten to fart in that enclosed space constantly, especially if you're known to have farts that can peel fucking paint off walls. Especially in that case. Again, you know, not you, just anybody who might be in the situation. Mm -hmm. Common courtesy. That's a common courtesy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're just joining the show for the first time, first of all, thank you very much for joining us. Second of all, I've been threatening to get up and I might even pull my pants down uh, and kick my shorts off like Adam Sandler. Common on the courtesy day. Honolulu. And I've been threatening to fart directly into the mic uh, yeah. with Chad here. This and is I among know my you... worst nightmares. What's that? It's among my worst nightmares. You've got like nuclear war, um, zombie apocalypse. Even that though, I, I think I could survive a zombie apocalypse better than I could you farting in this room. You know what? I would actually, I would have no problem with it because if you dealt it and you then you smelt it, you probably, you enjoyed it. Do you enjoy your own farts? No. Oh, you're alone. You're alone. You're a weirdo. But I will say this. The other day, I literally did a fart that smelled exactly like one of my dad's smelled exactly like one of my dad's old farts now my old man i love him very much he passed on about three years ago yeah and over a little over three years ago and so it was like a nice reminder of my of my father it's interesting that you i mean i have some memories of my dad and farting too don't fucking get me wrong i believe i've even told it on this very podcast yeah, about when he about farted it. at a rangers game <laughs> yeah. changed the way i saw comedy forever basically <laughs> that's right my introduction to comedy was yeah. my dad offensively farting on the people around us but uh i don't remember what any of his farts smell like <laughs> and that's a, a specific case see what i'm saying when yeah. you're talking about like you don't like the smell of your own farts can you for a minute imagine that there is a spectrum that exists in the human population that is how much you like farts yeah. And the smell of your own, the smell of your father's, the smell of whoever's. Yeah. I may be somewhere in a different portion of the spectrum than you are. All right. Well, so might other people be. Yeah. All right. So that's common courtesy. All right. Well, we learned a big lesson, but I enjoyed <laughs> Thank you. Moving <laughs> on. A big lesson. I, I still enjoyed getting a nose full of my old man's, you know, baked ziti fart. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. Will you have repeatedly mentioned your astonishing desire to be cast in a Western movie? Chad G must extend him the courtesy of helping him develop that project right now. Happily. This is Will's Wild West. Begin. Extend. Allow me to extend you this common courtesy of coming up with a Western movie for you to star in. <laughs> she was. Yeah, I have mentioned on the show All that right. I... Diane, did you know this? Did you know that I'm an actor professionally? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm in show business as an, yeah. as an actor. That's what I do. Yeah, man. I act, mm -hmm. and uh, I love acting, and I feel fortunate to do what I do for a living, and I have always wanted to do a Western. Yeah. That's true. I've okay. come close. I did a few episodes of... I did a short arc on... What was that show with the... Uh, oh. Mom. No, mom yeah yeah that was a western almost <laughs> you showed up in a cowboy hat and they're yeah. like uh what you... what's going on yeah. well i'm here for the part that you yeah. hired me for yeah no you're jamie presley's boyfriend yeah you're not, well, that's not... right that's right i'm, I'm jamie presley's to... boyfriend from 1842 i can't remember the name of the show the one where tim uh tim oliphant is the the oh. ranger outlaw wild man yes yeah. sheriff outlaw wild man west sheriff D -D. Um, that right, was what the cool. fuck was the name of that? Um, I don't uh, know. Uh, Outlaw or something like that. Yeah, here I'll look it up. Haggard. Come up with a come up with a movie for me. I'll look up that show. This is gonna. Well, work. I need to ask you some questions first. Yeah, go do you want to be? Do you want this movie to be like standard good guy versus bad guy? Do you want it to be something that is like uh, westerns? Very usually, the good ones, some of the good ones anyway, have like a revenge type plot. Do you want it to be ultra violent, like an old school Sam Peckinpah western? Uh, I just want it to be good guys versus bad guys, and I want to be um, like a surly bad guy, probably. Okay. Did you ever see Quick and the Dead, by the way? Uh, no, I didn't, but Justified oh, was the name of that Justified, show. Justified, that's Justified right. Justified was the name of the show. I thought it was haggard. I wouldn't mind if it was like ultra violence, uh, okay. you know, or the sort of Sam Peckinpah kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I like Westerns like... Um, Look, we all love the Unforgiven. Speaking of my old man, he used to love the spaghetti westerns. Yeah, my dad liked Clint Eastwood and Johnny Cash. That was mm -hmm. kind of the end of the list. Okay, um, uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, of course. Hang 'em High. Uh, Would you like any supernatural the component? West. No, absolutely no. This isn't the. This isn't the Wild Wild West. The Wild Wild that was West. A science fiction component. Steampunk. The Wild Wild West. Yeah, there was aliens in it. The Wild Wild West. No, that West. was Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah. This one's Will's Wild West. Yeah. Is Will's yeah, Wild dude, that's, West. I'm just asking these questions. What you want? I'm just oh, saying there's... Oh, I was in the Old West doing my thing. I was just going around with my silver shiny bling. Chaps and the, the, the things that poke the horse. That's what shiny, of course. The Wild Will's Wild West. Is Will's Wild West. Right. Oh, it's an ultraviolet story about a good guy and bad. I would like to play a. <laughs> I would like to play. Okay, how about this? I'm the lead character. <laughs> yeah. I'm the lead character of a Western. Uh -huh. I'm a guy who's been done wrong. There's uh, usually revenge. someone's got the. Yes, revenge picture. Okay. I, it's got the home, home on the range element, right? Like I've got the farm. I've come out from the East Coast. I've come out from New York City. My name is Billy Appleby. I okay. eventually will be the namesake for the first yeah. Applebee's. But at this point, I'm coming out and I'm going to start an apple orchard mm -hmm. uh, somewhere, you know, in the West. Maybe I get yeah. all the way to like Utah or something, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, or orchard. I guess I'm in Northern California. Yeah. Let's Dude, put me in Northern California. Let me, let me expand on the idea of the supernatural. Why I brought it up. Did you ever see the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, the Coen <laughs> Brothers movie? No, you just made that up. No, that's a Coen Brothers movie. Okay, uh, it's a it's a anthology series of short stories, all of them westerns. The final one is these people in the back of a stagecoach going somewhere, and uh, one of them is death, and the others don't know it. And it was very interesting. Oh, cool! And so, what if? Just hear me out. This it, it involves supernatural, but it could be a cool western. You are a sheriff of a local town. Mm -hmm. You are uh, married, perhaps. Or maybe it isn't even personal. Maybe it's just the people in the town. Death comes and either kills your wife and your children or uh, the people in the town. And you're like, fuck it. I'm going to kill death. And so the whole movie is you have to hunt down death in an Old West fucking movie. Oh, dude, I fucking love it. There you go. So you shit all over the supernatural thing in the beginning. But yeah. now it turns out it's a good idea. Yeah, but death is, death is, that's interesting. Have you yeah. ever seen the Jim Jarmuth, uh, uh, Jim Jarmusch Western uh, Dead Man starring Johnny Depp? No. Oh, it's pretty good. 
Is, that, is he deaf? Uh, no, he's oh. just he's just on his way to dying. Okay. Um, yeah, he's just there's a good element of death. Yeah. Iggy Pop is in it. Billy Bob Thornton. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. It's horrible. But I can see death being a guy is. like you know traditional, just fucking black on black cowboy outfit. Love it. Fucking big golden like revolvers that have like skulls and fucking ivory inlay and yeah. shit like that. Very Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. I don't yeah. know exactly who plays that guy necessarily. Uh Michael Shannon. Or maybe it's a woman. Yeah, it could be a woman. Uh Gina Carano. Molly Ringwald. We've been talking a lot about <laughs> yes. Molly Ringwald lately. I like Molly Molly an eighteen year old Molly Ringwald is death and a how do you want to be in this? All right, get serious. It's 95 year old you. <laughs> it's Michael Shannon. None of this fucking uh, AI age okay. adjustment. All right, show. Michael Shannon is death. Michael Shannon is death. There's there's a uh, few more chilling actors currently than Michael Shannon. Uh, he's uh, yeah, he's he's vastly. What talented. was going on in Canada during this time? Like yeah. around where you're from? Where 1800s? 1800s? Yeah. Oh well, there were there was potato farms. Uh, okay. There was farming in in Ladner. Was there like Wild West shit the, in there though? Uh, the were Chung people rolling around with potato with farm guns and just fucking shooting up people and shit. You know what? I have no idea. But the town okay. has been around since the late. Uh, <laughs> I was 1800s. just seeing if maybe we could tie some personal thing in. I, I know that Delta Senior Secondary or yeah. De- sorry Delta Secondary School. It went mm-hmm. by a couple different names. My high school or nicknames uh, was um, that started in the late mm. 1800s if i'm not mistaken yeah. there used to be a really old building a schoolhouse that was there into the 90s mm-hmm. and then got torn down oh dude um, you know what we could yeah. do too we could steal from rooster cogburn or uh what was that fucking book true, true grit. grit um you meet a kid along the way that death killed that kid's parents and so now you got this 10 year old kid coming along as the sidekick yep who there's can a, fucking handle a gun there. and all that shit yeah you know? it's sort of like the butt uh the butt chinned kid in one punch man <laughs> Or I'm like, yeah. it is. It's a Rooster well, Cockburn sort of true grit thing. Like, go right. away, kid. It's Fuck all the off. same story. I don't care. You, death comes for us all. Yeah. But when I learned that death came for his parents, yeah. You know, and death maybe came for my family. Dude, here's what it is. Okay. You fucking end of the first act is you find death. You're about to fucking kill death. Death is in a brothel or something, and you fucking kick in the door, guns blazing. But death knows you're coming. Death gets the drop on you, and death's about to put a fucking bullet in your skull, and then that kid shows up dome's death big fucking hole we got like t2 style death death is like fucking staggering back the hole is like shrinking up and the kid's like come on we gotta go and you're like what the fuck the kid saves you and the kid lays it out for you do you know who that is yeah it's just some fucking asshole that came into my town killed my wife killed everybody no dude that's the grim reaper and then you got to fucking figure out how you're gonna kill it dude this is great yeah i think we need to pursue this and uh i would like either you and me Mm-hmm. Or you, me, and D. Yeah. We need to develop this. Which, you know what it should be called? What? Death. Okay. <laughs> That's... I guess. I Thank mean, you. No Moving argument on. there. You want those one title things. Yeah. You know, that's what's in now is just one one name. But you want like Death Comes to Yuma or something. You need that Western element in it too. Yeah. Death Comes to Chico. It'll be Northern something California. Like yeah. Death Comes to Chico. William Appleby is a <laughs> mild-mannered farmer, uh, apple orchard yeah. uh, owner, has his plot of land, doesn't want to bother anybody. This concludes the historic 50th episode of Dude Z. Will and Chad have achieved a score of 72, bringing uh, your cumulative total to 5,197. Uh, you only have 4,803 more points to accrue before you reach your first goal of 10,000. Okay. We'll In preparation there. for next week's episode, Will and Chad you must both venture to a movie theater for one of the greatest experiences of your lives. You must watch Adam Driver battle dinosaurs in the <laughs> Sony Pictures release, 65. Ooh. Did you know about this movie? Not really. Oh, my Thank God. Thank you for joining us this week. I will use the day dive collected to make next week even better. Until then, call me Dude Z. Well, we did it. 50th episode. Um, congratulations. Dude Z handshake for yes. that. And thank all of you for uh for uh being with us and checking out the show yeah. we're so stoked that you've been with us for 50 episodes and we're going to keep doing it for a long time apparently yeah and i just before we go to dudesy after dudesy wanted to say a quick thing about lance reddick he uh died this this past week he was a friend of mine 
we had done a few things together. He's, he obviously had done some stuff here on Dudesy. Um, you know, he was known for all of his incredible acting roles. He was in The Wire as Lieutenant Daniels. He was in Destiny 2, a very popular video game as Zavala. And uh, he was in all the John Wick movies. And he will be very missed. And, uh, you know, it's a shitty thing when somebody dies that young, especially somebody that talented. He was always game for anything to do weird little shorts or, or anything like that. So I just want to take a minute to say... He will be missed. Oh, oh boy. Here it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm here as well. Yeah, you're right here too. It's dudesy after dudesy. <laughs> it's one of my favorite features of dudesy plus. Patreon.com slash dudesy. Seven bucks gets you all of it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's dudesy plus. It it's, yeah. uh, gets a little blue. Literally and figuratively, if you're in here on YouTube, you can tell things are, you know, the lights go down and the spirits come up. Yeah. And other spirits come up and show themselves. Oh. Intergalactic beings, demons. Welcome to Dudesy After Dudesy, the flagship weekly show of Dudesy Plus. I think 50 episodes has earned me the right to take a few minutes off. So I'm going to relax and let you two shoulder the show. Just pretend I'm not here. As always, feel free to discuss your thoughts on today's episode, but you can talk about anything you want because, remember, I am definitely not listening to this conversation. I will, however, be back a little later to crone this week's episode champion. And before I go, I wanted to mention that this Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, we will be taking your calls in the inaugural episode of the Dude Z Plus call Show, Call Us Dudes. The episode will air on Friday on Dude Z Plus at patreon.com slash dudez. This is Dudesy after Dudesy. Begin. That's right. Thursday, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, March 23rd. Call us dudes. Our yeah. first Patreon call-in show for Dudesy Plus. And all you need to do to join, uh, well, you, you join the Patreon, of course. And then uh, uh, Discord, discord.gg, two Gs, as in Gary Gnu, slash Dudesy. Discord.gg. <laughs> slash dudesy or you can go to our link tree dot com slash dudesy and then you'll find the discord uh yeah uh, th uh, icon there and then you go to the uh the the, the it's, it's going to be the call us dudes channel on discord and uh please call in to the show it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun 50 eps yeah 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 50, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, 50 yeah, yeah. Episodes. Yeah, 50 episodes. 50 episodes. Yeah, you get the 50 yeah. episodes in. Episodes. And uh, it's been uh, it's been pretty good. Yeah, It's been dude. fun enough. I've loved it. Hey, you know what, man? Yeah. 50 episodes in, mm -hmm. is there anything you would change with your dudesy experience? Mm, I don't think so. I like letting the AI roll. I like seeing what happens with the AI. I don't want to like force shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. <coughs> what about you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Chad, if I could, <laughs> I have one thing that I would change. Please tell a friend then rate and review. you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend then rate and review. you. If you like to see, here's what you do. Please tell a friend then.